Hello friends, welcome to risingpile.com. We are talking about series 3 where we are learning a great deal on trigonometry. This is episode number 19 and friends today we are going to learn about trigonometric identities and this is part 1. We are going to probably do like 3 or so parts, 3 or 4 parts and go over each of the trigonometric identities. So let's look into it. Now what is an identity? Before we talk about trigonometric identity, what is an identity? Well identity an equation becomes an identity when it is true for all values of the variables which are involved. So any equation becomes an identity when the equation is true for all values. It's important to understand that the equation becomes true for all values of the variable which is involved. Then we say it is an identity. So in the context of trigonometric identities, what do we mean by that? So we have a right angle triangle, so which is right angled at B. So let's say, so this is 90 degrees. We have a triangle ABC, right angled at B. An equation involving trigonometric ratios of an angle becomes a trigonometric identity. So an equation involving trigonometric ratios of an angle becomes a trigonometric identity when, as you can imagine, when it is, the equation is true for all, all values of that angle. So I know it is still a little bit metaphoric. We are, we need to take some concrete examples to understand this. But just wanted to highlight that an identity means an equation is true for all values of the variable. So in context of trigonometric identity, what it means is that, first of all, it is an equation that involves trigonometric ratios of one angle. And when we say it becomes identity, that means that that equation or that relationship among trigonometric ratios of one angle is true for all values of that angle. So now let's take a look at concretely what, it, what does it mean. So let's say we have a right angle triangle and angle B is 90 degrees. Now we know that opposite to the side opposite to 90 degrees is the hypotenuse, right? Now from Pythagoras theorem, we can say that AC square equal to AB square plus BC square. Why? This is coming straight from Pythagoras theorem that the, the square of the hypotenuse, AC is the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of squares of the other two sides. So AB and BC are the other two sides. So AC square equals to AB square plus BC square, right? Now let's divide both sides of this equation by AC square. So in other words, we are going to divide both sides of this equation by AC square. And you will see why we are doing that in a moment. So Again, recall that a, a equation, in an equation we can divide. If I give you any equation, say x plus y equal to a, a times b. I'm just randomly writing any equation. If this is the case, I can divide both sides. Say in this case, let's say divide both sides by c. I can divide both sides of an equation by any positive number. As long as I do it on both sides, the equation still remains same. So AC square is a positive number. So I'm dividing both sides of the equation by AC square. So AC square and then AB square divided by AC square plus BC square divided by AC square. Now, so this will obviously cancel and you will get one on this side. Now, here we can write this as AB by AC square plus BC by AC square. And why are we doing this? Well, AB square divided by AC square can be written as AB divided by AC whole square. Similarly, BC square divided by AC square can be written as BC divided by AC whole square. The reason why we are writing it this way is if you pay attention, what is this relationship? And what is this relationship? If you notice that, so AB, we are talking about 
here AB by AC. So if you think about angle A for example, AB by AC, AB by AC, if you think about angle A, AB is the adjacent side. So AB by AC, adjacent side divided by hypotenuse is cos A. So here what you have is 1 equal to cos square A. Remember that again, cos A whole square is written as cos square A. They mean the same thing. So AB by AC, which is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse, is actually cos A. So instead of this, we are writing it cos A. So because it is square, it is cos square A. Plus, what we have here is BC by AC. So for angle A, BC is the opposite side. So BC by AC, opposite side by hypotenuse is sin A. Square again will be sin square A. So what we have friends is this, that cos square A plus sin square A equal to 1. This is our first trigonometric identity. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more space here. So if I have any triangle, any right triangle, and if you take a look at any of the angle in a right triangle, sin square A plus cos square A must be always equal to 1. Now when this happens for all angles, so if this happens for all values of the angle, then we say this is a identity or in this case this is a trigonometric identity because this identity involves trigonometric ratios. So again this has to hold good for each and every possible values of angle A. In other words, if you think it this way, here on purpose I have drawn a right triangle differently. So here this is angle A, here angle A is this smaller angle and here angle A is bigger angle. So it doesn't matter what the value of the angle is. So this could be for example 23 degrees, this could be maybe 5 degrees or this could be probably like you know 68 degrees. It doesn't matter what the value of angle A is but you will notice that this will always be true. That is no matter what angle you take, sin square of that angle plus cos square of that angle, if you add them you will always get 1. Now a quick exercise for you, what you can do is you know that we have seen 30 degrees, right? We know the trigonometric ratios for 30 degree, uh, 0 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree and 90 degree. So for 30 degree, we know that sin A or sin 30, let's say sin 30 degrees is equal to 1 by 2, right? And we also know that cos 30 degrees is equal to square root 3 by 2. So will it hold good if A equals to 30 degrees? Will this trigonometric ratio hold good? We can actually try it. So sine square A will be square, right? Plus cos square A will be square root 3 by 2 whole square. So this will be 1 by 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus square root 3 times square root 3 is 3 divided by 4. 4 is your LCM, 1 plus 3, 4 by 4, which is equal to 1. So indeed, for A equal to 30 degree, we can actually confirm this holds good. So I would leave it up to you for you to check for the values of maybe 60 degrees and 45 degrees and 90 degrees and 0 degrees. And you want to make sure that this relationship holds good for all, all possible values of any angle. So friends, in the next video, we're going to take a look at the second identity.